What's going on, you guys? It is Coach Ike. I am truly excited for another episode of Everything Uncovered. We have a great one in store for you guys. Uh, for you who have not visited this channel before, this is where we have defensive backs who have made it to the NFL, to college, um, and they share their journey. You know, this is something that great insight you get to learn. Just like a father or a brother or a friend was telling you their journey and can help you hopefully aspire um, you to get to the highest possible or be the best person you can possibly be. So make sure you guys check out our uh, former videos. We have some great insight, some great people talking about their journeys and people you haven't heard about that you can learn a lot because everybody's journey is different. Once again, this is Coach Ike. For those who do not know me, from Pasadena, defensive back specialist, and also consultant. For those who do not know, Tuesdays and Thursdays, DBs, you want to make sure you come out and train. 6 p.m. training, okay? Saturdays, we also train. Competition day. This is where you can come, compete what you've been learning, apply it on the field, um, and get top, top coaching, okay, right there on the spot. So you guys make sure you guys tap in, follow us on social media to make sure that you guys stay up to date on when our works, workouts are and those dates will be posted. It's been a long time coming. I also got another one. There ain't too many like him from Pasadena, representing uh, Pasadena in, a, in the right way, doing it at a high level, giving back to his community, which he doesn't have to do, but he does with a smile, man. Um, the way this guy carries himself, I uh, truly am proud of him and his development as a man on and off the field. I got Darnay Holmes on here. Man, appreciate you giving me those flowers. Uh, thank you for you, man, for uh, just being a person who's just a, a vessel to the world, a vessel to the youth for real. You know, come across too many guys that tapped into many different hats and Excelling in all those, man, from financial literacy to training to podcast, but ain't too many could do it. And you always been passionate, guys. So to all the young guys out there, man, follow your passions, man. Ike showing you right in front of your face. Just get started. No matter what it looks like, just get started, man. Uh, exactly, man. And you already know, bro. I, I tell you all the time. You know, it's not even about football for the most part. It's it's about how how do we. How do we go forward and push it forward? And, and, bro, you've been taking that to a high level, to a high level, man. You feel me? And, um, you know, before we get into where you are now, because there was a journey that it starts. And, you know, for all of us, um, everybody's journey is different. We are both from Pasadena. You're a little younger than me, eight years younger than me. So your upbringing is a little bit different than mine. Bro, can you share um, how it was growing up for you in the city? City of uh, Roses, you know, what was your childhood and how was your your upbringing for you? Yeah, uh, my childhood was a unique one. Uh, pretty much was able to touch different uh, demographics growing up, but uh, I still remember those nights where I was at John Mayer High School watching Kevon, Carl, Day Day McFadden play, all these great great young males at the time playing. I was remember I was that kid who was asking for that tape and asked for them gloves so I could wear it the next day. And I played that mirror for the Patrick and Patrick, you feel me? So uh, when I was a kid, I always looked up to so many different individuals for just the way they presented themselves and demonstrated success. Uh, I wasn't really wasn't too much caught up in the, the, the limelight of how they got there, but more uh, being observer of the steps that they took to get there. Uh, to this day, I always tell K1, he was the one that truly allowed the section to know that you can take it as far as you want to take it. Uh, being the first American, being a guy who was from the city going to USC, just being a highly recruited guy, uh, you really didn't come across that yeah. in our city. Uh, you had a, a lot of guys who was – Profiled highly, you feel me, in the aspect of gay relations. That's something that we was uh, presented in a lot from uh, being at a home where uh, coming across a raid that 
God willing, I wasn't there, but my, my mom and sister was there. You feel me? And the guy that presented that to me, that could have been traumatizing. Uh, just having God's favor and protection, different, different, different uh, aspects of my life growing up. But uh, growing up, I just was always in the city. Uh, it was times where we didn't live in the city. My dad always brought me to the city, which uh, show us the ropes, uh, show us just how to be family oriented, how to be com community oriented from him starting up youth leagues, him uh, having an ecosystem of kids that play travel ball with each other, to football with each other. So I had a, a, a close net of friends that we just always wanted to compete and just have fun for real, for real. Like competing to us was just having fun. You know, we really wasn't too worried about who was winning the race, who lost the race. Like at the end of the day, we still boys when uh, the day ended. We just wanted each other just to have fun in the midst of the chaos. So. Uh, growing up was was a fun time. Uh, I feel like you don't got too many summer programs nowadays where yeah. kids are uh, <laughs> taking trips and you, you get your first kiss in the back of the bus. Like you not you not experiencing those things no more. Yeah. Like, love love out the park. You going on the water, kiss kiss a girl, and you come back up. You feel me? Like you know you not doing too many of those things no more. So and I thought that's something that we got to get the kids back rooted in. And uh, get these kids off that Wi Fi, okay. big time, <laughs> big time, man. You, you said something because, um, you know, it Pasadena is very unique. Um, we, we are truly, truly blessed. Um, you know, it is a tourist spot, but for those who live in there, it, it's not, it's not always like that. It's, it's not lovely. Um, you're not, you know, it's not the parade every day. Um, and I remember right. growing up. You know, we used to be at La Pinaresca, and this is where, yeah. you know, this is where it is it's rough. Yeah. At the same time, it was a respect factor. Like, man, these kids is out here. We're going to respect their time, and we're going to come out at nighttime. And, you know, it, it's not always like that. And, uh, you know, and, and like you said, I, I've never been related to, to any gang members or whatnot as far as, you know, involved, but, you know, I got family members and whatnot. But at the same time, people understood the journey that you was choosing. Like, hey, you know, we don't, you don't need to do this. You know, they, they looking out for each other. So, um, you know, our, our goal is, and you, you talked about it, how do we get these young men to continue that journey? Um, they can still have some, some friends or whatnot, but understand and cut that, that those things off. But you, you mentioned your father, bro, and we talked about this before because to get to the league, it's, it's, it's a journey like itself, and not everybody understand it. But your father, he played in the NFL. Um, looking back, bro, he gave you a blueprint. How much of that blueprint helped you get to where you are now? And then what are the things that you remember he shared to you when you guys are younger to, to now? Uh, I think I'm gonna start off when uh, when I was about to get drafted. A couple weeks, a month, a couple months beforehand, uh, we just had uh, sit down, and just talk about life, and talk about his upbringing and stuff like that. And I feel like as we get older, you start to really appreciate your father and get your your mother because you're just more understanding. Yep. Uh, just who they are, and I'm glad you grow older and able to. Uh, talk more about things, you know? So uh, he was telling me that uh, when he got to where he, he got there off period college, he never had like a, a training regimen, no training routine. And he felt like that was uh, his downfall because he was just a uh, guy giving ability. Uh, when the offseason came, we never really locked in. He never had like no ecosystem of people that kept him locked in, no actual training regimen. So, uh, this all leads me back to him starting his uh, training foundation called the Pro Aid when we were six, seven years old. You know what I mean? Uh, I never knew the master plan that he had uh, with this training us, but it all panned out with him just teaching us the basic dynamics of football, the basic dynamics of hand eye coordination, and just him loving us in the midst of all things. You feel me? Like, if, if you guys know my father, there'd be times where he would just pull up to a camp. And I'm balling out, but he just in the back. You feel me? He just observing. You feel me? He not screaming. He not doing all those things. You feel me? He never been a guy that when stuff don't go right, he's yelling at me or uh, 
he telling me what I should have done better. He just like, all right, but you could have. Well, he definitely tell me what I should have done better, but it, he just in a constructive criticism manner. You should mean never was like a. I never had rebellion towards him. Uh, or when I got older, you know, you get it. You get. You feel like you're a man. You, you rebel towards your father. That's just a, a, no, a normal human thing. I feel like you feel me you're like, man, I can make my decisions. I'm gonna live up my decisions. And then once you make that decision, like, damn, I shouldn't listen to my yeah. you know I mean? that. That's kind of with experience, but uh, his training regimen played a big role in just my development as a man. Uh, we was able just to experience different things. Uh, the way he presented himself in different uh, environments allowed us to have doors open from us growing up in Pasadena to me going to middle school in Westlake Village, which is a whole different demographic of people, a whole different uh, class of people for real. And uh, I had to just change the way I thought about things, uh, change the way I present myself, change the way I articulated my thoughts. And it was all uncomfortable things at the time, but now I'm comfortable to be where I'm at now to speak and to truly state what I got to state without, you feel me, having to correct myself. Like I, I know what I want to state. I know how to state it. And those environments he put me in really just expanded my horizon. You feel me? And it motivated me to be a better person, motivate me to build a legacy because I'm like, at the end of the day, there's people out here living this way. And I would never knew you could live this way until I was presented this. So it was like, why can't I grasp this? You feel me? At the end of the day, no knock to them, but the stuff that they went through is not as hard as what I went through. So the different things that I'm going to face within my career, it should just be a, a brush on the shoulder because I had different experiences that were way more harsher that could have turned out way worse than what it actually did. You feel me? And, uh, that state of mind, that he groomed in me, that uh, state of mind that my mom groomed in me was just pure love, uh, pure comedy. Uh, I feel like my mom just groomed in me that no matter where we at, uh, be grateful for the position that you're in. And no matter where we at, uh, it could be worse. And no matter where we at, like, love your, love your family in the midst of the chaos. And she never, like, stated those things. She just demonstrated those things, you feel me? And I feel like that's where I'm at now, how a kid is. Demonstration is the biggest act of kindness, I feel like. Biggest act of uh, imitation is demonstration, you know. And uh, no matter what you tell your kid, whatever you do, they go repeat it. And I, they are very observant of it. Like, I knew it was a real thing when my baby girl, she only a year old, she started coughing. She put her hand over her mouth. And I'm like, I ain't never told you to do that, but you've seen us do that, you know, and uh, it's just a blessing to see that, for sure. Uh, two things stick out to me when you said that, because um, you mentioned about your father speaking to him when you was older. And I remember, my, I have both my parents blessed to have them. Um, I am the youngest of four, and my parents had me at the age of 40 and 37. So... How I saw things, it was like I was the only child, but my my brothers and sisters were still there. But I saw a different part of my dad when I came back from college. You know, like you said, we we see um, the way they move, they talk, but I might understand, I'm not paying attention. But when I came home, it was like, all right, this is how a dad, this is how a father moves, this is how a husband moves. And I learned so much, and I think that's very important because us as young men, we under we need to understand that dynamic, regardless if our parents are perfect or not, which none of us are. There is something that you can learn from that, um, you know, to mentor, to uh, mold you into the person you want to be. And then, bro, you also brought up, um, and then you talk about exposure. Man, I, I tell the kids all the time: if you can get exposure, do it the best you can, because exposure it opens up your eyes to how different things are happening in life. I have family members who have never been past Vegas. So once we get exposure, though, you realize there's one, there's more than one way to do life. And you was fortunate to have that at a young age, which, like you said, helps you to move and navigate in our world now today, which is awesome. So all of us in life, we go through adversity, um, rather if it's early or late. We all face it. Nobody is, is over it. 
there was an incident that happened to your father. Would you share to care what happened? And then how did that change you in that moment going forward? Yeah. Uh, I think I was probably about like between the age of 10 and 12. It was the day before Valentine's Day, a casual night. Pops was doing with Pops go. And uh, the next morning, Pops didn't come home. But the night before, my mom was watching the news and she really don't watch the news for me. But if you are part of a family that were, if you are a part of a family that did things to keep the roof over your head, my mom was a woman who was uh, the one who cultivated everything. My dad was the provider. You feel me? And in the day, uh, the I'm living makes black individuals and black males do different things in order to provide for their family because you don't have access to different things that other individuals have access to. My dad was doing different things that he had to do just to provide for us so he could just be what a man is, a provider. So uh, the night took place, my mom watching the news. Uh, I was a kid where I was, uh, nine times out of 10, I was sleeping with my mom. So I was sleeping with my mom and my, my eye was just twitching. Uh, never been a guy who, Probably see my eye was twitching, but my eye was just twitching. My mom was watching the news. Next morning, casual morning, Valentine's Day, pops to come home. That was awkward. And uh, mom was a little concerned, a little down. And uh, we just went to around the corner to play basketball, my brother and I, my cousin, Deshaun. And uh, my sister ended up in the corner saying, like, dad was shot, dad was shot. We had us in the hospital. And that ride over there was just, uh, a battle with, with, with my thoughts. I'm not knowing what condition he was going to be in. I'm not knowing how to straight. I'm not knowing I'm going to get the same figure of formation that I had the night before. I don't know what, what my pops going to look like. Be like, we come in for a bone. We end up coming. And we got the report that my dad was shot seven times. Uh, it was between some um, internal feud before, uh, internal feud before uh, between a friend of his, uh, and things ended up the way it did, and my dad was able to uh, survive the, the, the situation. And uh, pretty much that experience opened my eyes up to just who you're hanging around, who you believe your friends is, and truly made me just step up and kind of say I was a man in the house because I had two other brothers, but it made me take that approach of I am the man in the house. You feel me? I'm not saying I was stepping out of my role being the youngest of the family, but my demeanor of grind went up. Uh, I'm only 10, 12, but I was still locked into my training. Uh, it was hard for me to lock in at school sometimes. Uh, so that's why I feel like the school system needs to be more kinder to kids who act up in person in class because you don't know what the home life has yeah. brought to them the night before or just in general. And I I faced that when my pops were shot seven times. It's, it's different places I was going through, just different uh, things that I was faced with. But uh, once that situation, situation presented itself, it just allowed me to know that uh, God is real. Uh, our family has favor protection over it. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of the chaos, you gotta find the beauty in it. And the beauty was just helping pops recovery, you feel me? Uh, being locked in out of the family mm -hmm. as a unit to help him recover. And my pops say to this day, uh, the reason for like God mm -hmm. saved him in that situation was because he was living out his purpose. Like the next day, uh, he had about like 10 or 15 kids, which included myself, my cousin my brother that he had to train you know and he felt like God knew that he was doing what he was doing because he had to take care of his family but also knew that he was wanted to transition out of that lifestyle to live out his purpose you know and uh, that's why I, to this day my dad is purposefully living uh, he got the NFL flag league uh, he's doing doing great things with that and uh he just found what his niche was and just ran with it, you know, and I feel like 
when that situation happened, he, he could have went one of two ways. He could have retaliated. We could have retaliated, which would have made it worse. Uh, his family would not have been protected. Uh, or he just took it for what it was and, and kept on moving forward. And but like, that's what he done. And that's what we did as a family. And uh, I feel like that approach of no matter what happens, keep moving forward. is something that I'm instilling in my baby girl, but it's something that they instill with me without even like stating it. You feel me? Like, and there's been times where in a black family, something to pop off the night before, and the next day, we all act, acting like nothing happened. And that's unhealthy, but in the midst of it, you're not knowing that it's unhealthy. So it's different things that I'm unpacking as an adult that make me better understanding like, yeah, don't go to sleep with something heavy on your mind and wake up like it's not still on your mind or it's not heavy because at the end of the day, that's a disservice to you, those around you, and it's not serving you, you know? So uh, understanding that and really just, that situation just allowed me to know like, ain't really much more out there that, that could be harder than seeing your pops chained up to a bed when he just got shot seven times. Like it's a definitely harder situation than other people have been through, which I'm not disregarding. And I'm with those people, but just for my sake, like it's like so many different things that could be thrown my way in my career that would never be outweighing what took place when I was ten, between ten and twelve years old for real. Yeah, yeah. Nah, man, what you said is very powerful as far as having to still go back to school. And like you said, they don't, the school system doesn't understand what's going on at home. And I, I think that's something that we see dealing dealing with the kids today. That's something that they have to go through. And we need to be uh, more conscious and be able to lend out a, a, a lending hand. Um, and you also mentioned how this brought your family closer together, which, you know, down the line, you know, years go on. Now it's time for you to go to high school. Now you end up attending Calabasas. Um, you going through this routine with your dad as far as training. You become this five-star athlete, okay? You're in the spotlight at a very young age. Um, did that ever get to your head? Or were you able to stay humble at that time? Because, you know, now in this day and age, you see everybody on social media, you know, rather they are... Um, you know, a top guy or not, they just showing it a, a little different way. How how was that for you during that time? Yeah, I feel like uh, I always thank the, the man above for just placing in me uh, state of mind of fair and not being who I know I could be. Like, even though I had these labels and these stamps, I always was still waking up before class to get a workout in, you know, like, or once practice was over, I was the last one on the field back to the X, Y, and Z. And it was just me wanting to be a, a craftsman and me wanting to be a perfectionist. And I feel like that's something that God can only instill in you. Uh, like you you got to have the will to want to take that. But it's certain things that are God-given. I, and I, I always thank God for that, you know, because there's a lot of guys who were stamped and that just didn't have no work ethic. And things resulted in the way they resulted. But uh, I want to thank God for that work. But outside of that, uh, I never got too caught up in it. Uh, I definitely allowed things to flow in the midst of uh, recruiting and stuff like that. I wasn't a demanding recruit. Like, I was just happy to be where I was at. Uh, came from really seeing mom sleep on uh, her friend's, uh, friend's couch and came from just different things where we were sleeping at other people's home. You feel me? So it's like, while I was positioned at now, I was just grateful for it. You feel me? I'm like, there's so many uh, steps that lies ahead that could allow me to, that would be allowed, that would allow me to take care of my family, but those steps are not presented in front of me just yeah, I got to keep on moving towards them. You know, so uh, I was just excited for what the future held. So I just constantly worked for the future to be something I was servicing for my myself and my family for real. Mm -hmm. So, man, you, you skipped the opportunity uh, of playing home. You know, like you said, at Mir, 
you you practice in there with the at the uh, Panthers playing there, um, but you end up actually playing in that Rose Bowl. You actually made it home attending UCLA. Now I've told you before, I'm a UCLA fan, so I'm I'm already watching. I'm I'm knowing. Um, I remember Mills was telling me he's like, man, I my my family go to UCLA. I'm like, man, who is this dude? And when you saw it, I was like, okay, there we go. All right, so I was excited when you came. But what made you choose UCLA over any other school? Because, like you said, you you could have went to anywhere essentially, anywhere that you wanted to. What what made you want to stay home so much? Well, I would say comfort played a played a big role in that. Uh, I was actually commit to Ohio State before I actually committed on uh, television at the Army game, but. Uh, once I got back from Iowa State, that visit from Ohio to California, the flight was a little long. Getting back home, it just didn't feel right. It just was a feeling within me that was like, yeah, you could do it, but don't mean that you should do it, you know? And uh, it was just a different element of care at UCLA from the coaching staff to the facility that was being built and the uh, academics played a big role for me as well. Like people don't know, like since I was a kid, I was always a high scholar and that was something that my mother uh, groomed upon me where no matter what's going on, you're going to be an educated black individual, you know, and uh, from me having to write standards because I was acting up. <laughs> For me being at just the DMV with her and I'm just writing because that's what we're doing to kill time, you know, just different things that she had me doing early on that carried me on just from a kid to adulthood. So uh, when I went to UCLA, it was more uh, comfort, academic, uh, <laughs> education system we had how the longevity of that could <clears throat> propel me to different uh, avenues once football is done. So I feel like I'm not disregarding Ohio State and not saying they couldn't provide that, but me being a, a hometown kid and also being able to play in front of my city, which I wasn't able to play in high school, it was just like a, a real no-brainer. And uh, during my career, I uh, had some ups and downs, uh, had some different moments that was hard on me, but uh, I was able to stay the course and just continue to move forward. Yeah, yeah. Um, people, people don't understand, man, like where you go, and I, I say this, I went to school in Tennessee. Man, football football at the end of the day, but it's about enjoying where you are at, like off the yeah. field. And if you don't like that, that can affect how you play on the field because if you don't like the environment you're in, like, bro, yeah. I, I just want to get out of here. So I, I definitely explain that to kids. Like, look, you playing football is all is all good. I realized I was a city dude, and it wasn't until I went to Tennessee I was like, nah, this ain't for me. But at this time, there is no transfer portal. You can't just up and leave how you can now. So, man, I, I think what you said that sheds light, man. You know, making the best decision for yourself and and, and fitting out and weighing out all the pros and cons rather than oh. This is a school just because of their name. Not understanding, like, I still got to live here. I got to go through these weathers and, and these conditions out here. So, um, you know, there I came across an art, our article, bro, where you shared when you was at UCLA that your mom had to move in with you, which is very um, different as far as the college experience. But I already mm -hmm. know, you know, that experience with your mom, it just, that dynamic was something crazy. Can you share how much closer you, you became with your mom during that time period? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to take my hat off to my roommate, Lil Wadu, for even allowing my family to move. Yeah, I want to take my hat off to Lil Wadu for even allowing my family to move into our place. Uh, that's a real dude from uh, the L.A. district, and he understood this upbringing being uh, black. So by that, by that even happening, he was just, so uh, he was able just to understand like just the placement of things and how uh, just 
family structures really is. So when my mom moved in, uh, before she even moved in, though, know, uh, I was actually receiving a stabbing from UCLA. Uh, I was breaking off my mom and my sister to some bread, which was pretty much the majority of the bread that I was having from for them to pay their insurance uh, and just pay for them to stay wherever they was at. In the midst of that, I was staying in the locker room. And in the midst of me staying in the locker room, that was the best year that I had as a ball player, which is crazy. Looking back at it, it was unhealthy. But my state of mind was um, in my workplace 24-7. So it shouldn't be no stone unturned, you feel me? But it was nice where they vacuumed in and stuff like that. I had to cover my hair. You know, the lights turned on. I had to put the blanket over my uh, face. But none of those things uh army for real and uh once that took place uh I was able to truly figure out all uh, right what do I have to do so I'm at peace my mom has a place over here my kids have a place over here and we just free flowing you know my sister just about to have a kid uh you know uh, things weren't how it should be, such as relationship-wise. And I was like, all right, what can I do? And that's just me stepping out being a man for real. So uh, I ended up finding an off-campus place that was about uh, 15, 20 minutes away from me. So it was a deep bedroom. Uh, I was able to move up in there. And from there, I was just paying our rent. So my mom's had her own room. My sister had her own room. I had my own room. Uh, I had my lady with me. And before that even transpired, like it was, it was times where my lady and I, where she would come in town, she can't sleep in the locker room. So I go to my boy, Quentin Lake, who played for the Rams, uh, his crib, and I'm sleeping in the hallway off on uh, on this little sofa he got. We couple them up, so like they're having fun, enjoying ourselves. You feel me? Like, he playing me, uh, him and my boy, Jay Shaw, they playing me their little rap songs. So, you know, in college, everybody want to be a rapper. <laughs> Everybody wanted to be a rapper just to do it. You know, your little free time. Everybody hit the studio today. We outside, Bob and Dad. Then we go inside, enjoy ourselves, and go to sleep, and wake up, and uh, on to the training schedule. You feel me? And me and my lady we was talking about that a couple of days ago. Like, if you look back, that's another thing. I feel like a lot of people don't reflect. I feel like that's what I've been doing lately. Like, you got to reflect about where you came from and where you at now. And if you do that, you're going to be just more grateful for it. Yeah. What has transpired in your life? A lot of things could have went, could have went the other way, in so many different situations. And God didn't let it go that way, or even my choices didn't allow it to go that way. So, I'm just grateful I'm at now. But even those who may not be, I know for a fact I'm not where I want to be in the aspect of uh, accolade. Say like outside of that, like I'm at peace of where I'm at. You feel me spiritually as a man, X, Y, and Z, but like as professional, certain things that I want to accomplish, I'm not there. And I feel like a lot of people in their in their life are not at a place where they haven't accomplished much. But if you just look at where you've been at and where you are now, life wise, journey wise, nine times in ten, you way better than where you was at before. So if you just grateful for that, you know, that's a that's a win itself. But uh moving past that, like you may not get to those accolades or accomplishments that you want, like every day. That's just out of your control. But if you're working towards that, you being grateful in the midst of working towards that, you may you may hit those accomplishments. But if you don't, if your family got a roof over their head, the legacy being built, and you able to cultivate generational wealth, that's a win. And I want to be able to move past where people come up to me and see my life. Like I was outside yesterday. Uh, and my family and I got a truck. So uh, uh, an individual walk up like, dang, this is a nice truck. Like, you must be an entertainer. And it's like, that's the first thing that you think for for a black male. Like, I could see uh, a white individual looking good. And I don't think that our uh, friend, he's an entertainer. But yeah. I'm like, nah, I, I, I inherit this through generational wealth. Shook it. Yeah. Like, oh, you feel me? But I'm just putting that in the air. I'm manifesting that. You don't got to know what I'm doing in order to yeah. leave. In order for me to uh, reap these benefits from the man above, you feel me? But that's what I'm trying to get towards where we got different networks, we got different resources, we got different infrastructures that allow us to live 
abundantly live, allow us to live comfortably. And we're not under that label of, oh, he got that because he was just a professional. Yeah. Like, nah, we got this because we were, that professionalism was a lot to pad, but we were able to, you feel me, navigate within that realm to cultivate different things that the other individuals are doing. Yeah. And uh, I feel like that's just where I'm at. Like, I'm, I'm over the, the, the stigma that they placed on black individuals. Like, we were kings before time, we feel kings now. So, like, really uh, grasping that identity that we have lost, that they have truly, like, took away from us. So we could just fit into their rat race that they want us to run. But it's like, we had an age where we got so many different resources that we provide us with the information, uh, things that we don't got to lean upon the school system to be taught these things. We don't got to lean upon uh, different individuals for us to feel empowered. Like, it's right in the, the palms of your hand from your phone to technologies to whatever Wi-Fi you connect to. So it's like, uh, doing different things that allow me to position my family, myself, and different individuals so they could take care of their people. Because I end day, if you look, look at it, everybody's doing things to take care of their people. Like, mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. Like, people go out there to hustle to take care of people. People in my community uh, selfishly rob, which I can't disregard, but they don't have to take care of their people. You feel me? That's just what it is, you know? So it's like, all right. If you're able to educate people on different ways that you can take care of your people, that's actually legitimate and that's actually just, that actually is uh, something that you can sustain in a longevity of life, they're going to want to transition into it. But we're not pre- pre- presenting them those things. You feel me? Like we in the community, we're presenting them, you feel me, things that are short term or things that are materialistic. You feel me? And all those things are good. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're great to have, but those things don't have no meaning at the end of the day for real. Man, bro, you know, that that's the whole point of me starting to train because I wanted to mentor and help other young men and even women understand exactly the subject that you just talked about. Um, now, what you said that what we're doing as um, as a Blacks, what we're doing and it's no no shade on anybody or whatnot, but we're thinking short-term rather than long-term. Our counterparts, you know, when they do stuff, they set it up for their kids' kids. And, you know, it's in the Bible that mm-hmm. says, you know, uh, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Um, and we haven't gotten that um, that revelation yet, and that's where we come in as far as setting that trend. First, we do it for ourselves, and then we can help the next and guide them to to do it. And, and uh, you know, it's a journey. It takes all of us. It definitely does, man. So I asked that 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 question before because um, you know, NIL is here. And what NIL would have done for you and your family at that time would have been a blessing, man, big time. Um, but I want to ask you because you know, everybody has their the way, you know, they'll do this, this, and that. I want to ask, how would you maneuver? Because um, and we're going to get into this this conversation even more, but the way you move now, bro, you you partnership, you you doing brand stuff, you understand the power of branding. So, how would you maneuver with NIL now as yourself? And then, what advice could you give to these young guys regarding dating? Because now these guys got dated, I mean, got money, and all these women are coming at them, just as you know when you NFL, but. It's just now you're so young and you really don't understand um, what these women want. So what those two things, how how would you maneuver? And then how what advice can you give the young guys? Yeah, uh, going first on the NIL thing. Uh, I would say the biggest approach is understanding that you are a product and those people who come, come in to pay you are just a consumer. Mm-hmm. So set your market at what you want your market to be. And at the end of the day, they're going to fall in line or they're not going to fall in line. And uh, with that, those we live in a capitalist world, so those people who's out there giving giving out that money, they are doing something that's allowing them to give out this money. So it's like, what are you doing before you give me this bread? Uh, inform me on the way you was able to get to this position that you're at, that you could be a booster to this nonprofit, yeah, college. You feel me? Which is really a for profit, but that's a whole different conversation. Yep. But 
just connecting those dots on, all right, bet. Yeah, we doing this NIL deal, but outside of that, I want to be able to position myself that I could work with you after this. You feel me? I could be in those uh, meetings that you're having, or I could shadow you so I could learn these set of tools that even if I'm not able to get to the next level, you feel me? I got this relationship with you that I'm able to transition into something that allowed me to take care of my people for real. You know, and that's something that I was doing in college was I was meeting with the uh, the owner of our training facility, which is Wasserman, Texas Wasserman. And I was meeting with uh, the COO of United Talent Agency, which was like 20 minutes down the street. Like I was meeting with people, you feel me? And that's just something that I wanted to do because I'm like, at the end of the day, it's different ways that you got here, but it's different uh world and values that allow you to be able to sustain what you're doing, you know, and at the end of the day, some people walk into that, but in order for them to walk into that field, they had to, you know, prove themselves to their family that they could uphold what that had, uh, standards were, you know, so uh, those are different ways that you should approach NIL, uh, figure out how you're going to budget that, uh, how you're going to maintain that, uh, don't just trick it off, uh, you can check off a portion of it, but the other portion make sure that it's making sense for you. Uh, or really just set it aside for it. Like, you don't have so many people that's going to want to tell you, put it in this, put it in that. But it's like, you're so young, you don't got to live with that state of mind of a 40 year old who has to get into stocks or X, Y, and Z. So when they're 50, 55, that's their 401k plan. You can that's their retirement plan. It's like, you're young, you got time for certain assets, certain things. Why won't you just stay liquid with your bread? And once you educate on different things, you could allocate your bread to different things, you know, or you do put some your money into something, see why you're putting your money into something to see if that person got their money in it. And at the end of the day, you don't know what's going on. You feel me? And you got yourself to the position to get money. You feel me? So don't be scared to speak up. You feel me? Like at the end of the day, they came to you. You feel me? Like you're the you're the person in a position of power. You feel me? So I'm not saying mishandle that position of power, but uh, act accordingly. But uh, on the female aspect, like, you got to figure out what's for you and what you want. You know, everybody want to live different lifestyles. You feel me? Uh, whatever lifestyle, float your boat, uh, go on and ship that sail, you know, and uh, while you're shipping that sail, you're going to have different storms that come with it. You know, so you got to understand what, uh, the type of pilot you want to be and what type of path you want to take. Uh, and sometimes you got to go down the wrong path to shine the light on the right path. You feel me? Uh, you're going to come across different, different, uh, individuals, different women. And you definitely may come across it once. And uh, that happened to me when I was in college. And as I got to the lead, our relationship just grew, you feel me, because different uh, things come with being a lead and you just have to get closer, you feel me, and that just come with life. And I feel like that comes with you being a marriage, like, it's only one way, which is together, you feel me, like, and you just got to understand that and let go of your selfish ways. And I feel like you just got to internally change, bro. As males, we got to just eternally change. Bro. And that's just all it is, eternally change. And uh, that's just what, what we consume in, what environment you place myself in. I feel like environments play a big role. Uh, if you don't place yourself in an environment, you're not going to place yourself in a, a tempting situation. I'm not saying you're going to avoid all those tempting situations. Like, nah, that's not how life works. But you could diminish those rates by just placement. You feel me? So uh, I'm learning that as a, as a professional. Uh, and, it's the best time is family time. Yeah. Remember my uh, OG told me, you stay with your, this is why I have a baby. <laughs> he said, if you stay with your dog and your girl, you're going to be able to play out your whole contract with the giant. Hey, <laughs> get to the beach. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it was. And I was able to play out my whole contract with the giant. You feel me? That's a blessing in itself. You feel me? Yeah. My lady was talking about that. Or just how we never had to move like for four years. and And that's, a blessing for you know, in this in this league that's constantly cycling, you know, it's out with the old and with the new, you know, and I was able to form a home base in New York, which I'm very proud of. Uh, excited to see what the future holds, and 
uh, New York definitely my second home outside of the West Coast. Like being dropped in the East Coast and the West Coast is definitely different from a uh, weather perspective. Uh, I wouldn't say a grind perspective. When people go to New York, you say it's blue collar, X, Y, and Z with the market and stuff like that. Yeah, but you got the L.A. market. You got the L.A. temptation as well. So like, it really wasn't no different. Uh, it was just uh, more – you're just more in the limelight, for real. You know, you're able to uh, consume that stuff more because that's what they're known for, which is media. You know, L.A. is known for media, but it's more entertaining media. It's not news media, you feel me? Nah, man, I, I think you you hit it on the head, man. Education and for these guys to move, bro. Like you said, move as, as a boss and, and maintain it. And you mentioned as well as getting drafted to the Giants. So – I'm, in this article I read, it said that um, your dad said that your biggest challenge, and you mentioned it, was going to be the New York market as far as media, how they are, you know, or it's all about winning and everybody um, is on the news, whatever, rather good or bad. So being there in the four years in New York, and you already said your experience has been great. Has that been the biggest challenge for you, moving correctly in the media and just the tabloids and how the, that market works? In New York, yeah, I feel like it, it allowed me to grow as a as an individual. Uh, allow me to not be defined by commentary, so that's all it is: is commentary, is all opinion. It's not things that hold value, which holds value, which is the word of God. So allow me to shift my identity. You feel me? Like from high school to college. I was identifying myself with the the all scholars, the Pac-12, the five star, just labels, 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 which is all commentary. You feel me? As you trans, uh, as you transpire and go through the league and the, the the flow of the league, if you just identify with the flows of the league, you're gonna lose yourself. You feel me? You gotta have something that you can stand on. And I was able to stand on God's word. You know, I was able to stand on responding to how. God will want me to respond, you feel me? Because the other day, it wasn't pretty at all. Like, the journey never going to be pretty, but journey can be pretty in the eye of the beholder for real, you know? And I was able to uh, truly grasp that. And I feel like once I grasped that, I was just constantly affirming myself, like, no matter what take place in this game, I'm going to respond accordingly. I'm going to respond with my head high. I ain't going to be moved by what's taking place, you feel me? And that's just what it was. And I feel like that allowed me to take the the downfalls in my career and allow me to keep on moving forward. Like I took it for what it was and just kept on pushing. So not to take it too harshly. You yeah. Yeah. If you be too hard on yourself, you can lose yourself. And then from there, you just trick yourself out of position. You feel me? I'm like, I can never be the one that tricked myself out of position. Because at the end of the day, I would rather that be something that took place upstairs and I saw my control. And I control what I could control in the midst of all this stuff. Now that that's powerful because it's people who don't understand there is a dynamic that it has nothing to do with with football. Like you can't even control what's being said, and like you said, you can lose your identity. But you know, as I know, you know God. Once you know who you're true, who you are from, can't nothing sway you from what you truly are, who you are. But not only that, man, I think your upbringing was like the perfect situation for you because of the media attention and the the accolades like you said being young and then your family dynamic bro it was like perfect for you to go to new york on top of like you said god already you already knew who you were he was like man this is nothing at the end of the day and i think you handled it correctly because um a lot of people do even in smaller markets man they they can't be talked about you know it, it it's a spiral because it's been so much accolades, accolades where they get caught up and that's who they are. And it's not necessarily who they are. It's just, you know, those are the things that you were able to do, but that doesn't determine you or what you're able to do. I have teammates um, still to this day, they haven't moved on from football and we've been done for 10 years. So, <laughs> you know, um, people get caught up in those things and what they did in the past is like, you know, it's unfortunate, but, that is part of that transition of being a football player. What is your identity? What Who am I outside of just playing football? But when you understand God and having him in your life, you understand who you are as that individual. So, um, bro, that, that transition 
from from college to um, NFL. Now we know that it's completely different. Like people don't understand. Mm-hmm. They think, um, you know, I love when I'm at games or whatnot. They's like, man, this dude, he's supposed to be doing this and that. I'm like, and y'all truly don't understand. Like y'all don't understand the position. Y'all don't understand the nuance, the details of the game. What has been the biggest challenge or the biggest transition for you from college to NFL, just from the DB position? Because of course we know off the field, there's a that's a whole nother monster. But just at the DB position, I'll say this: formulating a routine that allows you to prime yourself to be ready to perform at your best when your best is needed. Uh, I feel like in high school and college, you got your trainers there, you got your swim coach, you got just all these people around, you got an ecosystem, but as you turn into a professional, you're not an amateur no more, you know, so you got to actually cultivate this thing yourself, you know, you got to grasp from the OGs on what they're doing in order to pioneer So you just got to be observing the different ways of the approach of the game, you feel me, the approach of the lifestyle of being a professional, for real, you know, and really just understanding that when you don't want to do something nine times out of ten, you should do it, you know, and uh, just working past those walls, really, like, the biggest thing was this uh, figuring out what was suitable for me, you feel me, because at the end of the day, there's so many different things that are suitable for others, but if it's not suitable for you, why well, even do it, you know, so I had to uh, have a lot of trial and error, and uh, those trial and errors, uh, sharpen me up. Uh, so I'm at, I'm at a point where I'm at uh, going to year five. I'm excited for this future holds because I'm at a point where I got a, a good foundation under me. Uh, I know what steps need to be took. I knew why I wasn't uh, performing high when I wanted to perform high. So it's like a lot of things that were intangible are now tangible to, to, to me because I was observing in the process from now I was enjoying the journey of it. So I'm just excited for the future with for real. Man, you said something key because I experienced the same thing. You know, you you be playing and whatnot, and you be like, man, why am I not getting the same results? Or why isn't this happening? And then, like you said, you got to reflect. And I realized, you know, and I'm sure every coach that, you know, talk to you or you encounter, they want the best for you for the most part. They want to teach you up. But you understand, like, this don't apply to me, though. Like, that works. It's yeah. generic information. Like that don't help my situation. I'm my body a little different. I my strengths and my weakness operate a little different. And um, I always applaud you, bro, because you always you're trying to like you said you're perfectionist. People who don't know Darnay, he be like, hey, nah, we gotta get to the right real quick. Um, who who are some vets that you lean on or that you talk to? Like, hey, man, like what what y'all see here, or or who is those people? Like you didn't even say nothing to them. You just watch how they move at that DB DB position. Uh, right out the gate, Jabril Peppers took me in. Uh, he introduced me to boxing. Uh, he introduced me just to that, that nervous system. Uh, Logan Ryan taught me how to watch film from displacement to formations and how to read uh, offenses based off the coverage you got. And James Bradbury just showed me how to take care of oneself uh, physically. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And then I got different influences that allow me to take care of myself spiritually with just the, the net of men that I grew up with in uh, fellowship. So it was just the placement that that, that God had me in just, just allowed me just to cultivate the man I'm in now. And that was something that I asked for during my whole process of uh, a draft for just place me somewhere where I could just just grow as a person. And that's why I really left UCLA after my third year. I, I I just wanted more an aspect of uh, growth and development, you know. And I feel like if you look around and you feel like you're stagnant, nine times out of ten, it's time for you to move on. It's uncomfortable, but you got to take that step. You feel me? So uh, those were pivotal people in my uh, career that that played a role in. Uh, my coach definitely played a role. Uh, I had my coach for four years, Jerome Henderson. Uh, played in the league, was a uh, Swiss Army knife in the league. Uh, went through times where he faced the politics of the league. So it was times where we had those conversations before camp was ended. He was like, it may be, at the end of the day, you're going to look around, these people that's in the seats, not going to be in these seats. 
and that shouldn't stop y'all grind. You feel me? So when you got somebody who experienced the NFL, experienced the benefit of the NFL, and, and is informing you on how to approach a business, you know, you're able to conduct yourself more, uh, you're able to conduct yourself better. You feel me? You're in a better position, you know? So uh, just those around me actually played a pivotal role without being even knowing, and I was just soaking everything up and just being a sponge and just utilizing different things that I need to utilize them when the time came. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't think it's talked about enough, especially where we're from. Um, taking care of your body, bro. Have, have you gotten there yet? Um, have you, like, the lightest went off? Because now that I'm older, I tell kids, hey, we got to do this, we got to do that. They'll be like, all right, coach. And they be like, man, I ain't listening. I ain't doing that. But we only got one body. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I, I say this to my kids, we are independent, independent contractors as a football player. And you understand that your body is your business and you got to take care of it. You know, you you treat it a little bit better. Have you gotten that? Um, have you gotten that, that like, hey, I need to turn it up another level on my body or, or, or are you still getting there? Yeah, uh, I feel like you got to let go of the broke mentality of not wanting to invest in yourself. But like that's the biggest step. I feel like that's what a lot of people don't invest into their body because of the expense that it is. Uh, invest into the crowd because of the expense that it is. But it's like that expense going to be a better return than the stock market if you do it right. Exactly. And if you understand what I'm saying, you, I can unpack that for you. Like you get put the money into play a treasury bond and you get a 5% return at the end of the year. But you put your money into your body, you, you get a max out contract. You ain't worried about that treasury bond. <laughs> you feel me? So, like, uh, understanding that what you're doing is a return of your investment. So, uh, taking care of your body is probably one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't really uh, take note of. And that goes with from life, life coach to mental coach to performance enhancing coach. Like, that's something that I'm investing in today. This offseason is a uh, life coach and it took God for him to uh, really just connect those dots for me. You know, I wanted to be with somebody that was uh, of my color, but also somebody who played the profession, somebody who is understanding of me that knew me before I was who I am now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was able to rekindle a, a relationship just through uh, the network that, that I have. And I'm taking those steps starting uh, Sunday with our first uh, first session. So it's like, you got to do different things that's going to allow you to propel yourself to things that you want, you know, because uh, we, could, we could be in that waiting game for so long and then you look up, you waited too long, you feel me? And I feel like that's what uh, I'm not trying to be at is waiting too long and thinking uh, me being comfortable where I'm at now and when time comes, like, damn, I was too comfortable, I was too complacent. Uh, I let I left some stones on time. Now that's big because there's there's phases in life. In order to get to that next phase, sometimes it's something that we got to do to get to that next phase. Sometimes life is not going to present those opportunities like it used to so easily. We we got to move in through it. Um, now, bro, I, I wanna I wanna speak on this because, like I said, I don't I don't witness too many people. I don't follow too many people as far as such social media wise, but um, I do see how you move. As far as business, how you partnership and branding, um, you do it strategically. And uh, I want to know, bro, did this come? And you talked about, you mentioned it, you did it in college. But did that come from your dad or a team? Or was that just something you saw and you was like, nah, that's how I want to move? Uh, I feel like I saw it in my pops. Like he, he had b home Entertainment. He had just so many different expenses. Uh, that was outside of who he was. And Derek Holmes was a football player. And I just saw him brand himself in, a, in an aspect that I was observing upon, but also just understanding that I'm in this uh, position, this limelight for a duration of time. I'll be down and I could take advantage of what's being presented to me. Like, mm -hmm. I know for a fact if I wasn't in this position, I wouldn't be able to attend or have access to certain things. You know, so it's like, all right, I might as well set time aside to foster and cultivate these things. So, when the game is done, I don't look like an individual that 
is in need of this position. Like, nah, I, I, I fostered this relationship, so we got a relationship now. So now you want to do it generally because you know me, you feel me? And I'm, I'm not just here because I need to be here, you feel me? So I feel like that's where I'm at now in life is like, how can I position myself where I got uh, different flows of income coming in that is uh, outside of football? And it's going to take time for those incomes to flow. But if you're able to put those pieces together when you're done with football, you should be able to have yourself ready to transition to different uh, things that's going to allow you to continue to maintain the lifestyle that you got, which is just taking care of my people's career, you know, uh, living moderately. Hey, for, for young guys, what he's talking about, he's talking about building relationships, all right? Building relationships this is the most important thing. This is how the world in business operates. This is a relationship. You can do business faster with someone that you know than someone you don't necessarily know. But not saying it's impossible. It's just going to be an easier thing. So, uh, you know, thank you for sharing game with that, especially these young guys. They, they need to understand that. Man, that's far, man. Your, your career is still young. But that's not far. What's your uh, favorite uh, moment in your career? Uh, ain't no better feeling than being in the playoffs. Uh, that's that's something that I'm constantly chasing when I wake up is that playoff feel. Mm. I feel like a lot of individuals take that for granted. Like, I was in the room where my big homie, Leonard Williams, been in the league for eight years, and it was his first playoff, and it's my third year. Yeah. And you look back like, man, yeah, you, you feel me, made – this amount of money, but at the end of the day, people pay it for the passion of it. Like, once you get to the point where your family's straight, you're paying for the passion and love of the game, man. He was, at that point, after year four, for real, you feel me? So, he was just like a, a kid at the candy store when we, we got in the playoffs, you feel me? So, I feel like our first playoff win was uh, astounding. Uh, having uh, contributing to that win was amazing. Uh, just the feeling after the win was amazing. The uh, respect that you got from the city was amazing. You feel me? And just the vibe going into Philly was amazing. Then we, we lost that one, but it is what it was. But uh, that and playing in London was different. You feel me? Like, I'm a kid from, as you said, my first summer camp was La Penaresca. Then I migrated to Loma out the park. Started off at Farnsworth Park. You feel me? Then we went to Charles White. Then I played at, you feel me, John Mayer, like, now I'm in London playing ball, you feel me? And that's something that I didn't take for granted at all, right, when I set a foot out there, you feel me? So that experience was live. Uh, having people in London call your name, it was just a different experience, you feel me? And that's just me uh, soaking it all in. I feel like that's where I'm at now, going into year five. And I'm experiencing this whole thing, you know, like I'm showing my people love when they come to the game. I'm making sure my mom and them experience the full lifestyle, being an NFL parent. You feel me? I feel like we get too caught up in uh, maintaining and sustaining, you feel me, the wealth we have, and we forget uh, enjoying the wealth that you, you feel me, generated. You feel me? And I feel like that's why I'm at. It's like enjoying it, uh, but doing it in a moderate situation and just creating memories with it. Because at the end of the day, I play the game for the memories, for the love of it, and for it to take care of my people. You feel me? And I feel like we live life to create memories, you know? So, uh, just doing all that and, and every facet of my life has been has been fun for sure. Now that that's for sure, man. And bro, I, I see how you move. And when you come home, rather if you at home, and I'm sure you do it other places, but you give people opportunity. Now, when I was coming up, there's and there's a lot of great people in Pasadena who do great work, but yeah, people don't they don't have a big name. So because they don't have a big name. They don't give them opportunity. They they do just as good as work as the person's big name. You give people opportunity. For a prime example, you gave me an opportunity to trade. You didn't have to. You feel me? But you give other, and I know other people, you be like, man, we going, I'm going to do business with you. Why is that, man? Because, like I said, you don't have to, but at the same time, you see it like, hey, I'm going to go back and give people opportunity to show that they can do what they do. And, of course, I'll go from there. But where where did that come from? Uh, I feel like start first start off with the person I'm uh show shame with, like giving them credibility for their work. Like I'm not just linking up with somebody just to link up with somebody, like the work has to be verified. And 
if I could trust in a model, I'm going to rock out with it. And plus, I feel like I'm at a position in my life where I just want to work with my people collectively. Mm -hmm. I'd rather give my finances to people that's of my kind and help them move forward and help them have me on their resume so they can move forward in their life. And that's just what I'm standing on right now. And I feel like that's just the way I'm operating. No, no, that's that's big. And, uh, you know, we, we see it sometimes. I, I've seen it. You know, I've seen guys from the area. And it's like, man, like these people, we've been training with them since we were younger. But now that you can't talk, it's like, all right, man, I understand it. But, hey, you know, and then they look back like, you know what, I didn't even know. You know, I'm getting this information. But I, I appreciate that definitely, bro. And, of course, you know, the people that you work with, they understand it. I'm definitely, they're appreciative as well. Now, bro, I, I want to talk about legacy, man, because from to get to where you are, you know, that's definitely a blessing. But, bro, you guys have done camps, your family, as you shared, your daddy's always in the community. You started uh, the football program with the Giants and everything. You give back to Pasadena, and I'm sure you even give back in, uh, in New York. I just saw recently you, uh, you posted you went to the prisons out there um, with Justin Tuck and whatnot, bro. When did you know that you was going to be on this journey of giving back? Like, was that always part of the blueprint? Yeah, no, it's definitely a great question to wrap up on. My phone about to die, so I mm -hmm. take that. But uh, yeah. legacy has always been something that was on the back of my mind. But uh, I grew up inheriting, giving back. Uh, a lot of people who know my grandma. Uh, she was, they called her the queen of the, of the King Manor, which is the project by Jackie Robinson. And she was always the woman who, a woman who was always going to make sure you have something to eat and some fresh clothes on your back. You feel me? And I don't remember experiencing her, but I always hear those things. You feel me? And at the end of the day, your ancestors are always with you and different things that they stood on is rooted in you. And you just got to, you feel me, uncover those things, you know, become those things. So, uh, that's something that I always had, but also it took a network of people for me to get where I'm at now. You feel me? Like I didn't get here long. Like I'd be lying hard if I said I got here in solitude. Like that's cap. You feel me? So uh, I understood that if I'm in a position of giving back, you are obligated to give back. That's just the way I I operate. Like I'm obligated to give back. And obligation is not taxing on me. The obligation is fun, you know, because at the end of the day, seeing someone smile or just really shining God's light is the way to live. You know, at the end of the day, if I'm just selfishly spending God's provisions, which is God's money, this this is not my money. Like, God gave me all these things. Right? This is not my talent. Like, God gave me all those things. So if I'm just utilizing all these things for my own sake, that's not the right way to go about it. You feel me? Uh, I'm going to let this truck go by. Yeah, that's just not the right way to go about it. So uh, when I had the, the connections to do different things that allowed me to give back to others, it was a no-brainer for me. Also, it's just about, as you saying, building our legacy, building that resume, building that uh, credibility of being a guy who is in a community because you don't want to come back to a community when you washed up and you want to get back now, you consider a fraud. Like, that's just what it is. No matter what section you from, you consider a fraud. You feel me? So that's something I want to stand up. But also having a baby girl and her not having the upbringing that I had, I want to present to her uh, different things that she may not have to go through, but she's appreciative of those things. You know, she, she got those values that she needs to be a, a woman that's uh, genuine to others, a woman that's... Uh, understanding the others, you know, and uh, that's something that my pops and moms always instilled in us, and I feel like that's something that I'm uh, still in my baby girl, really just living on in my in my day-to-day -day life. For sure, man. Man, Darnay, we appreciate you for your time, man. Proud of you, bro. Continue to do your thing, man, and continue to put on for your family more so than anything. You already know the city. We we behind you, bro. Yeah, no, appreciate you. I see you once we start on, on that field, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Y'all going to be seeing me locking him up. He <laughs> record everything, so you're going to see some film of me clamping him up. 
Nah, man, nah, man. <laughs> These knees is getting old, bro. I'm starting to hurt, man. Yeah, to... <laughs> he already backing out the spade. <laughs> <laughs> starting to hurt, man. Yeah, bro, but nah, I appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you, man.